everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, really excited to kick this year off with this um, huge load of learning that uh, we've um, had the good fortune of getting from Ben. Um, ben, thank you so much for getting time out this morning and coming in here educating us all. Um, before we get going, I uh, want to get some housekeeping items out of the way. Let me share my screen. All right. Can you see my screen? What's up? Sweet. The idea is we want to have uh, you all ready for 2024, kick ass when it comes to sales and really crush it this year. And we are calling this the Million Dollar Club. We have planned a few lessons for you uh, over the course of this quarter. A few more people, I just let them in. Um, over the course of this quarter, um, starting with mindset, mastery that we'll talk about today. Get over to time management. The date on time management is still to be decided, uh, not final. Uh, then we'll get to building the pipeline, lead generation. Um, um, you all have heard uh, Patrick speak on the last call we did in December. Um, and then we'll go through pricing, differentiation, proposals and contracts, handovers, renewals, um, what your tech stack should look like uh, when you are uh, going into the market, how you can like um, use technology to your benefit. Um, and then how do you build a sales culture in your team? Uh, so that's the list of lessons we'll be going through. Um, and the idea is <clears throat> uh, if there are items you would want us to cover, then you know who to reach out to. You can reach out to us. Um, reach out to me with crush at cyclecon.ai um, and we'll share some contacts later on that you can sort of reach out to and ask us to cover certain topics here. Um, who is this course for? So if you want to really crush it when it comes to sales, this course is for you. If you are part of teams who are obsessed with growth and you want to use knowledge to really change the way you have been doing things or add certain pieces to it that will help your process to shine, in the market, then this course is for you. Um, Site Recon customers, the course is for you. Soon to be customers, the course is for you. If you are not a Site Recon customer yet, um, you should consider becoming one because um, really we are very finicky with this thing right now. This might just become exclusive for Site Recon users starting from the next lesson itself. Um, so not only will you lose out on a load of learning over the next few months, um, you won't have access to the best in class tool for sales guys to go out there and really win uh, jobs. Um, and uh, there, there are a lot of people who talk game about, you know, oh, you know, our tool integrates, our tool does 10 different things. And uh, But what, really, what you really want in that point, uh, at that point when you're running your sales is something that lets you win. Um, and we really hold that down here uh, to help you succeed. Owners, CXOs, team leads who want to scale their business and are looking at skills um, and are looking at sales as a primary way to do it, um, then this course is for you. We will be primarily talking about sales here, um, thinking about it both from commercial and residential angles. Um, construction sales is a different animal um, and uh, we'll leave it for others to organize a masterclass on it. Um, Site Recon is not the place for it. Um, without further ado, I want to hand this over to Ben, uh, principal at Advisor Consulting. He spent long years at Valleycrest. Um, he's been at the forefront of driving lean operations as a practice in our industry. Ben, thank you so much for taking some time out today and talking to us about getting better at sales. Awesome. Awesome. It's a pleasure to be with everybody today. Um, look, Karsh, I'm going to ask you to, uh, to, to go ahead and, and re-engage on the display and run through the um, uh, run through the slides. So we're going to talk about mindset mastery. And I have been in the landscape business uh, since dinosaurs. I've been in it forever. Um, I have uh, owned and operated landscape businesses. Work with um, I've worked with literally hundreds of landscape businesses. So we're going to go through some uh, uh, some material today. If you are not muted, you might want to just go ahead and, and find the mute on your uh, on your controls. That'd be great. However, um, stand by your mute button because I'd like to have this interactive as much as we can. And I'd like to, to ask some questions of the crowd. So uh, uh, be ready to unmute yourself uh, when <clears throat> when I ask uh, when I ask you to. So so I want to start talking about um, talking about systems. So short term goals. What, what we're really talking about is business to business sales, B2B sales. You 
you, you've got to have a system. You've probably got a sales goal for this year, but you need to put a system with that to, to be successful. Um, selling uh, landscape maintenance, uh, it helps if you're charming and it helps if you have great charisma and it, it helps if you have great connections. However, these things did not necessarily make long-term success. What makes really long-term success, particularly in business-to-business -business sales, uh, is a system. Um, and, and so I want to give you my system. I want to give you our system, advisor consulting systems. Uh, let's take some notes because this is this is big. This is a simple system that, frankly, very few people actually do, but that's incredibly effective. Um, what I want you to do is create a list of 100 target properties that you currently do not have, but you want. 100 properties in your marketplace that you're not on, but you want to have for your company. These need to be the right size. They need to be the right property type. They need to be in the right geographic area. Your first iteration of this list is just the property names and the addresses. And I want you to give yourself 60 days to put that together. Today is January 12th. 60 days from now is March 12th. Within that time frame, get that list, put it together, drive around, search on satellite images, do what you need to do, but compile a list of 100 addresses where we need your trucks maintaining that those properties. The next step with the system is to gather information on each one of those properties. Who's the management company? Who's the property manager? Who makes the decision on the landscape contract? Who's currently doing it? Which one of your competitors is currently doing it? What's it worth? What's the value? What's the budget for the landscape maintenance? When will it go out to bid? Give yourself six months. Give yourself six months to gather that that information six months from today um, or, or six months from March 12th after you've compiled your list is September the 12th. It's a Wednesday. All right. Between now and then, if you can gather at least 80% of the information of all the intelligence that's associated with your list of 100 properties, I promise that you're going to have plenty of opportunities. This is the this is the system. This is the way that you that you get yourself grounded and oriented in, in terms of B two B sales in, in this business. It's a lot of work. It's pretty simple, really. It's 100 properties. You're gathering intelligence, all of them. It's a lot of work. You're going to need some tools. Let's talk a little bit about tools, Ukar starting with uh, prioritization. So you've got this list, but all properties are not created the same, obviously, and you're going to need to prioritize in some way. Um, so what do you base your priorities on? You know, well, obviously, you know, one of your priorities is going to be the really big fish on your list, the really big jobs, the, uh, the exciting opportunities. The problem with the big fish, though, is that a lot of times it takes a long time to sell them, right? And if we go fishing, we want to catch some whales, but it takes a long time to catch whales. In the meantime, we don't want to starve. So we got to do something. So there's a couple of other matrices that I want you to use to prioritize your list. One of those is just value versus difficulty. Okay. What are the easiest ones to sell that are the most valuable? Those need to be up there at the top of your list, along with the, with the really big fish, the really exciting, sexy opportunities. The easy ones to sell are the ones we already have some kind of connection. You've already um, got some kind of introduction or, or, or some way to, to approach them already. The easiest ones and the big ones, and I want to take the, the, the ones with the least difficulty and the highest value first, the ones that have high value but are maybe a little bit more difficult next, the ones that are really, really going to be hard to sell and are not worth a whole lot, we're just never going to do, right? Just take those off your list. If there's not a whole lot of value to them and they're going to be extremely hard, the brother-in-law, the owner is already doing it. Don't fool with it. It's not worth your time. You only have so much time. So value versus difficulty, high value, easy first, more difficult next, big fish. It's also, of course, let's talk about geography as well. So we don't get paid to drive around and mobilization can be as much as 20% of your cost. Pursuing accounts that are already near accounts that you're doing really pays us. And it pays us in more than just the value of the account. It pays us in less risk, less fuel, less mobilization, more dollars per day earned, essentially, when we can be dense. Utkarsh, you want to tell us a little bit about how Site Recon can help the people on the line think about this? Yeah, I think uh, if you have your service routes, you're sending your crews down those routes, you got your list of properties. Um, it's it's very easy to find similar properties by applying the same set of rules that Ben was talking about size, type, and even landscape area that these properties should have and scan large neighborhoods, entire zip codes, entire city blocks, and find the properties that 
you know, you can use to sort of arrive at those hundred sites that Ben was talking about. Um, so, I mean, for us, it's very easy to do that for you. I mean, you can still find like top 20, 30, 40 properties that everybody is talking about in the city and you really want to get them. So, you know, those, um, but to make sure that you have not missed anything, you need someone like us to sort of run the scan on the whole area and find out, basically make sure you didn't miss out anything, find out the rest of the sites that you should be going after. And then you can obviously apply rules like how much parking lots they have, how much um, turf it has and so on, so that you can um, optimize for the mix of services as well. Perfect, awesome. You need these tools, right? So you gotta get a list, right? And and you can use the the you know, geographic features that are available in Site Recon to help you develop that list. You can use the, the difficulty versus value to help you prioritize the list, geographic locations to help you prioritize the list, size to help you prioritize the list. So you need a list. And then we talked about, you need to spend some time developing intelligence information about these properties. Sooner or later, uh, if you're gathering the uh, the information about the property management company and the property manager, uh, your competitor's information, you're going to try to get a meeting, obviously. And if you get the meeting, what are you going to talk about, right? And you want to go into that meeting prepared. You want to be able to talk about something. You want to sound smart. What about the turf condition? What about the bed condition? What about the age of the landscape? What about the current maintenance standards that are being done on that that property? You can you need tools to be organized to, to gather that information. Site Recon has a, has a Plato app that is an awesome tool that where you can put information in and you can you know geolocate all of your notes. You can keep them all together. You can associate pictures. It's a really powerful tool. Now, by the way, this is not just a, a witch hunt to find anything that the current contractor is missing. You know, if you if you get a meeting with a property manager and you tell them, you know, there's a weed on the third parking island and there's a dead shrub on the northwest corner. Well, there's a weed on your property, too. There's always going to be a weed. What you're trying to do is is gather intelligence, things like, you know, the turf quality is really excellent on your site. So that's not something that you really need to worry about. However, I am concerned about the fact that the shrubs across the front of the building are really mature and they're beginning to uh, uh, to overgrow the uh, the windows. There may be security risk. That's something that maybe we want to talk about. You know, we have a couple of options where we can rejuvenate or we can replace. It really kind of depends on your, your budget, your occupancy. Why don't we meet and talk about that? Now you're smart. Now you're offering solutions, but you need a way to gather that information that's that's easy for you. To, it's easy for you, right? It's easy for you to communicate that's visual, right? These are tools to help you do that. In fact, Plato, the, the the tools that are available can be can generate reports and put all those that information into reporting formats that help you to stay organized, that help you to keep all your information together, and it's available, it's searchable, it's communicable. The last thing you want to do is uh, is torpedo your own success by being disorganized, right? The tools that are available now help you with that. I'm not the most organized person in the world. I wish that these tools were available earlier in my career because they're awesome. They just make it easy. Carry around your phone and you can gather, you can intelligence gather while you're standing there without having to take a whole bunch of notes. So we, we've we gathered, we've generated a list, right? We've prioritized based on geography, based on value versus difficulty, based on uh, the size of the opportunity. We've gathered intelligence all at some point we got to get a meeting, right? So we got to do something with all that information. So part of the business to business sales is cold calling. Is there anybody on the line today that um, that does cold calling regularly? Anybody want to unmute and speak up? Not everybody wants going once. Yeah, I, I do it all the time actually. Yeah, I do a lot. Yeah, of Tyson, do you love it? Yeah, I do love it. I make a yeah. living. Good. Oh, it's Good. so much fun every single day. Cold calling. <laughs> Cold calling is challenging. Cold calling is, uh, it, you got to have some courage. And I, I, I applaud you, Tyson, for, uh, for having the courage to go to speak up and do that. Part of the business to business sales process is you just got to develop the, uh, the courage, the security, and the confidence to do a certain amount of cold calling. Well, let me tell you a, a quick story. I used to have a business developer that, that worked with me, and she was just a great lady. Not a landscaper. She's actually a school teacher, but she was a heck of a good business developer. But uh, I went with her uh, years ago to uh, do a, a presentation 
And we went and we did the presentation and we did just fine. And we were headed back to the shop. She was driving. She was going to drop me off. And she just pulled into this office building. And I was like, Jessica, I got, I got to go back to the shop. And, and she said, this is on my list. We're already here. It won't take but a minute. Just come with me. We need to get the information. I don't know who to, who to reach out to here. So we pulled up into the visitor's parking lot and she just walked in and walked straight up to the security desk and asked the security guard. And she went into her thing and, and I need the information on, you know, who makes the decision on the landscaping. And the security guard just looked at her and said, you know, young lady, didn't you see the no soliciting sign on the door? And she said, I, I'm not soliciting. I'm just gathering information. I just need to know who to talk to, you know, and she's charming. And the guy was kind of bewildered and he just sort of wandered off and he came back in a few minutes with a business card. And he said, look, she doesn't work here. The property manager has, she offices out of another business, but you got to call her if you want information on that. And she ran behind the desk and she hugged the guy and said, oh, you are so sweet. Thank you so much. And she grabbed the card and we went out. And we went, that's cold calling. That's having confidence. That's being courageous. And that's having fun with it. You know, I mean, she just had fun with this guy, you know. And uh, but that's part of it is just having the uh, the wherewithal and the courage that's on her list. It was pretty high on the list based on geography. It wasn't high on the list based on uh, difficulty. It was actually kind of difficult to get in touch with them. But that's what you do is you, you develop the confidence to make that cold call. You do like Tyson's talking about and every day you go out there and you just have fun with it. You approach it. You got to be persistent. You got to be, you got to be nice. You got to be humble, but you got to be persistent when it comes to cold calling. Sooner or later, as you, um, you know, as you take your list and you're gathering your intelligence and you're cold calling and you're getting um, meetings, sooner or later, you get the request from the property manager, right? That uh, says, hey, you know, we need a, we need a proposal from you. We need something. So how do you react? You know, what, what do you do? Do you, do you act with excitement or do you act with stoicism? You know, you got to, uh, uh, you got to respond. And obviously you want to express gratitude and obviously want to be enthusiastic for the opportunity. However, I am just going to put a, a little caveat with that and say that it doesn't hurt to, to have a little bit of a buyer's mindset being you being the buyer, you're buying the customer in, in some respects, there's only so much of you to go around. There's only so much of your company to go around. There's only a limited number of people in your marketplace that are going to get the benefit of you and of your services. You're not going to provide landscape services for everybody in town. So, you know, you don't want to be haughty. You don't want to be ostentatious, but it's okay to express a little bit of scarcity. You're not providing a bid to everyone. You're choosing them because they're on your list because you want them, right? But you're choosing them to, uh, to do business with you. So be enthusiastic, be grateful, but understand that you've got something to offer, right? And you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be fawning when it, when it comes to that. So you don't need to be stoic either, but uh, be appreciative uh, and, and excited, but, uh, but understand that you've got something special to offer because you do. I mean, the stoic thing works great when you are, uh, when you're dealing with people trying to make friends and, you know, trying to get someone on a date. Uh, but uh, uh, probably not on the business side of things, hundred um, percent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I had a I had a question on the last slide um, because uh, we were talking about how to approach someone who doesn't know you. Um, yeah, and you were talking about gatekeepers. But what if there's no gatekeeper and you just end up freaking walking into the room where the property manager is sitting? What do you do then? And like he's he's a busy guy, right? Like, and you you. Great. That's a great question. And yeah. Yeah. He's a busy guy. She's a busy guy, a gal. Somebody on the phone want to uh, want to respond to that. What if you just walk into the to the office, there is no gatekeeper and you, I'm sure this stuff you do. They do. They were Say in front of you. You're not going to find any better opportunity to do that. So yeah, they're standing right there in front of you. Take your shot. Pitch them, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're right there. Not, you're not going to find a better opportunity than that. That's what you look. That's what you dream to walk into a business and find. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you be prepared, Brian, to pitch them? Yeah, again, just knowing, um, having that research done prior, um, knowing what it is that you're, you know, going in there with confidence and knowing your knowledge of what it is that you're you're attempting to sell them in terms of services that you offer. Which, as a salesperson, we should all be experts at that, anyways. So. Yeah, just go in there, introduce yourself, you know, first impressions or lasting impressions. So 
you want to get in there and just, you know, make that good first impression and uh, make a 30 second friend with that person. Because like I said, you're not going to have a better opportunity to not have to go through a bunch of hoops to talk to the person that you're trying to get to. So just always be prepared, you know, and just be ready to go and fire, fire your bullets. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Right. I, I love that. Right. If you've done your homework, and you've gathered some intelligence on the property, taken some pictures, um, looked at it, made some assessment about what's going on, then you can talk intelligently about their property. And you've got to have your pitch on your company ready to go. Right? <laughs> and if you're on the call right now and you don't, you got to get that by the close of the day. You know, you got to You got to be able to uh, to put it together. You need to co connect with people and relate to people. This is very much a relationship business. And so, you know, part of your conversation isn't speaking at all. Part of your conversation is listening. So you can respond to them and you can relate to them. But uh, to Brian's point, yeah, if that, if you get that opportunity, be ready, right? I, I got to know what property that I'm trying to sell. I got to know something about it. I got to go into the, to the room with, uh, with some intelligence about the property. And I got to be ready to, to pitch my company, pitch myself. It's like the 30 second elevator pitch is what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah, right. If you're stuck in the elevator with somebody and you want to talk to them, that's like the elevator. Yeah, you got you got 30 seconds. Say something smart, right? Yep. I'll I'll comment a bit on that. It, it is. It's a 60 second commercial. And within that 60 second commercial, you got to really understand the pros the prospects, needs, and challenges. I do a lot of research on them prior to even going in. And, you know, I craft a compelling introduction first and foremost. And I have that even with me as a, a bio of who I am, what my services will do. And it highlights all the benefits and unique selling points that are going to differ differentiate the offerings. Um, yeah. And, and you create a value proposition as well. I, I like that. I think that you have to, uh, to be ready and prepared to create, to communicate your features and benefits and your value that you offer. But don't overlook the relationship side. People buy who they like. Right. They don't buy features and benefits. They buy Utkarsh because he's charming. Right. They buy Frank because exactly. Right. 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 Uh, they buy Brian. They buy Tyson because they're nice guys. Right. So so in that moment, don't miss the opportunity to Brian's point to go ahead and pitch, but don't miss the opportunity to listen as well. And what are their pain points? Who are they? You know, get to know them a little bit. Uh, if you can respond to them on based on where they're at, you know, in their life and connect with them as a person, you're going to sell it, right? That people want to do business with people they like. Lutkarsh, what else did I miss? I think, I think we are going strong. Uh, there was another question I, uh, uh, I had in mind, uh, but I can uh, save that for later. Perfect. Cool. Utkarsh, do, uh, uh, are these salespeople ever going to get told no? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, uh, that's just a part of life, man. You can't do anything about it. You're going to get told no. So look, the best business developers on this call will close maybe 20 or 30 percent of their their prospects, their pipeline during a year. If that's the case, then they get told 70 to 80 percent of the time they get told no. Right. You got to be comfortable with that. No doesn't mean never. No doesn't necessarily mean I dislike you. But no means you didn't sell it today. And that's part of being a salesperson. That's part of being in business to business sales, certainly. And you got to have kind of the wherewithal and the mindset just to keep going. Um, in fact, if your close rate is is 80%, then mathematically, I mean, if your close rate is 20%, then mathematically, you got to get eight no's before you get a yes, right? It's just sort of a part of the game. In fact, if you're not being told no, you're not busy enough. <laughs> if you're not being told no at all, you're just order taking. You're not being proactive. The best, the people that sell a million dollars or more a year, they get told no a lot and they don't take it as never. And they don't take it as I like you. They just know for now and they go to the next one. They go to the next one. They go to the next one. Do try to find out why you got the no, right? So that you can hone whatever, if you get another opportunity that you can hone your price or your presentation or, or whatever for the, for the next time. But just expect the fact getting told no is uh, is kind of part of the business. You got to be confident and you got to have a sense of self worth uh, in in this role. And and the way to you know there's a couple of ways to do that. For one, 
you got to be busy. You, you got to be active. You can't be waiting for somebody to call. You got to be pursuing your list of a hundred jobs. And, and there's going to be, you know, that's a dynamic list. You, you cre- initially you create a hundred and then you're going to sell some or, or they're going to go away or they're going to get uh, that list gets truncated from time to time. So you keep got, having to go back through and refresh it. You keep having to go back through and reprioritize based on value, difficulty, geography, size. So, and, and some of it you're going to sell. So that automatically shortens your list. And you have to keep gathering intelligence on that list. That's the biggest piece of this is to gather that intelligence on that list. But part of success or, or part of confidence comes through success. And, and, and I want to I want to give you a key here that, that I think is super important in terms of adding to your success. There's a lot of things that you can do. You can develop your list. You can do your takeoffs. You can do estimates. You can write proposals. You can um, ask for leads. But the sales process moves forward based on only really one activity. And that one activity is talking to your prospects. You talking to people moves the the process forward. Face-to-face is best. What's second best is doing what we're doing right now, video conference with your uh, your prospect. Uh, Phone conversation is third. Text conversation is fourth. Fifth is email communication. But in some way, shape, or form, you in communication with your prospects is how you move the ball forward and move the ball forward, maybe moving forward to a no, but at least, you know, I'm getting somewhere. So I get to the next opportunity so I can pursue, pursue, pursue the, uh, uh, the opportunities they have in front of me. If move, if moving the ball forward is primarily based on you talking with people, you communicating with people, then I want you to think about all those other things, the takeoffs, the estimate the proposal writing. If there's, if your success is directly proportional to conversations, then all those other things have to be done. But is there any way that you can delegate them or or expedite them that it's, it gives you more time to do the one thing that makes the biggest difference? And that's talk to people, right? Set meetings up so you can talk to people. You got to be using the tech. You got to be using Site Recon to help you with takeoffs, to help you with estimating, to to help take some of the burden of uh, of the really kind of non-value added stuff that's out there. I was, uh, I I met Utkar some years ago and he told me about his product and and I thought, so this takeoff thing, I could actually have it just done online. And I thought, well, all right. So I sent him a couple of addresses and said, well, well, take off these properties and let me know what's come back with. And he sent me back. I was like, wow, that's pretty thorough. That's pretty good. So um, I happened to be doing some work in um, on Hilton Head Island, which is off the coast of South Carolina. And uh, one of the features of the landscape there are these huge, big, mature live oaks that are all over the island and they're beautiful. But from a satellite image, they obscure the landscape. You really can't see the landscape from a satellite image. And I said, here, do take off on a couple of these properties just to sort of test, you know, to see if uh, the quality of the uh, of the product and what was returned to me was better than what our own guys did by hand, you know, rolling a wheel around the properties. So I don't know how they do it, but if I can get that done online quickly and cheaply, for goodness sakes, what moves the, the ball forward is not doing takeoff. What moves the ball forward is talking to your clients, right? So um, I would absolutely encourage you to the things that are not talking to clients, figure out if there's a way that you can delegate or offsite those items, free yourself up as much as possible to talk to people. That's where you move the ball forward. That's where you get confidence from. That's how you develop your 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 value. So I uh, I had a thought here, which is you know if you statistically speaking you close like 15, 20 percent of the deals that you're working on, and let's say the deals you will end up closing they haven't happened yet. It's like month four or month five of of the calendar year. Um, you're chasing down the sales target, and you're still pretty much in that 80, 85 percent zone of things that have not closed, and things are just like starting to look bad. Because, you know, summers around you've already sort of gone past one sales season. Spring rush is here. There's not much sales activity going on. It's a bad place to be in. What, I mean, what do you do then? You're asking what you do then if you're, uh, yeah, if you're yeah. slow? Like, I mean, there's, <laughs> I know rejection is part of life, but 
once it's summer it's like holy shit i'm not able to sleep it for <laughs> for someone like me i it would get there right 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 you you got to continue to talk to people talk to people talk to people as long as you're talking to people it, it it's you you're going to you will bear fruit from from that you know if you're not talking to people then, uh, then you should be worried but as long as you're talking with with people the uh your opportunities are going to are, are going to materialize i see so that's that's the bottom line just just being at it being at it being you know you need the meetings you got to start somewhere so you got to start with your list and you got to prioritize your list and you got to gather the intelligence and that's kind of your system but why are you doing all that? You're doing all that so that you can have meetings and they're productive meetings so that you have stuff to talk about. So as long as you are having meetings, if you're talking to people, even if they're telling me, look, we've already let the contract out for this year and we're not going to do anything. Go take them to lunch anyway. Go bring people coffee. Go continue to talk to people. It's a relationship business and relationships are born out of conversations. They're born out of this. They're born out of, uh, uh, you know, talking face to face. The more you do that, the more time and the more touches that you do that, the more fruit it bears. As long as you are doing that, it, it, it'll, it'll bear fruit. You, you got to, you know, you got to have a system. And, and here's the system that, that we're promoting today. A hundred targets you prioritize based on value and difficulty on geography and on big fish opportunities. You gather intelligence, gather intelligence, gather intelligence, all in preparation to go meet people and have productive conversations. If you just randomly sort of drive around or like that, go ahead, Patrick. Uh, Patrick, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I apologize. I hit my uh, unmute button and didn't mean to. No problem. No problem. So if you're just driving around or you're just waiting for the phone to ring or you're going to Chamber of Commerce meetings, you know, that's not a plan. It's just random. And it's going to feel random. If you have a list and you reprioritize it often and you're constantly gathering intelligence to go with particularly those jobs that are at the, uh, uh, the more towards the top of your list, it's going to feel structured and you're going to feel structured. Business development is kind of lonely. And if you've been in that uh, realm for a, uh, for a period of time, you already know that, right? So how do you stay grounded? How do you not just feel sort of lonely and, and wandering? Have a list, prioritize it, gather intelligence, pursue those customers that are in the top quartile of those lists based on geography, size, and difficulty versus value. Now it's not random. Now your activities are directed, they're focused, um, and, and, and they'll bear fruit. It, it's horrible to feel ungrounded to feel like you don't have a plan you don't have you're just waiting for something to happen hoping something happens hoping you get something that you can go pursue you're if you do what we're talking about then you're creating something that, to pursue rather than waiting for something to pursue so that's how you stay grounded and and, and productive uh, and it is you really have to kind of get a little bit used to the loneliness it is a very um solo pursuit uh, on the business development side it can be a lot of fun and frankly relationships are a lot of fun uh, but it takes a while to uh, to pick up some momentum do you also um advise on when someone builds a plan like that list is one thing do you also advise on like revenue potential or uh, target verticals like stuff to focus on because 100 properties can be very, very widespread. Um, also, like you pick that number, very, if 100 is a very specific number, so two questions now, why 100? It could be 50 or it could be 150. And then the other thing is, do you also like advise on more focus beyond just like 100 properties? Well, yeah. The uh, uh, So let me answer the, the second question first. The part of... As a business developer, you need to participate in your strategic planning for your, your company every year and uh, kind of understand, based on the strategic goals of the company, um, are we better off pursuing multifamily or office industrial or HOA or residential versus commercial or, you know, what type of vertical best suits the uh, strategic goals of the, of the company? And that should help prioritize uh, your list or, you know, may help make your list in the first place. The, uh, you know, and there's a lot of factors to, to, to put into play there. Different market verticals have different enhancement opportunities in terms of, you know, ancillary sales. You know, my experience is that the HOA market, usually it's pretty rich in terms of enhancement penetration. All On the other hand, 
they're a handful to uh, to manage. So it, it kind of depends on who you got and what your strategic in, initiatives and directions are. The uh, the 100 jobs, of course, to be honest, is a little bit random. In my experience, whenever I, I started with uh, managing salespeople, you know, kind of with this platform, the the initially the targets were were 50. But what I've kind of understood is that really, by the time you you gather your intelligence and you prioritize, usually it's only about at most 25 percent of uh, your your targeted jobs are going to be active. You know that you actually have some opportunity to get a meeting or whatever with. Well, if if you only have a you know a, a 50 item list, then you know 25 percent is only. 10 or 12 jobs at a time that I'm really, that's not quite enough, you know, to stay busy. I'd rather have 20, you know, 25 top quartile uh, active job, you know, things to pursue at any given time. If it's 200, now I got 50 jobs. Now it's cumbersome, right? So while it's a little arbitrary and if you only left, you know, if your, if your list has 90 on it, I'm not going to scold you. If it only has 110 on it, I'm not going to scold you. But if it's only got 40, you're not busy enough. You, you need more targets than that by the time that you properly prioritize. If it's 200, I don't believe it. You know, you, you can't keep 50 things in the air at one time. So that's kind of where that number comes from. Wow, very cool. And uh, during the course of the year, if, uh, you know, stuff doesn't make sense, like you don't throw up your plan, like you, you just like keep getting at it, hitting it, keep like that's your plan, stick to it. All right. I got a question here from Ivan in the chat box. I want to ask that. I got a list of addresses filtered by difficulty level, easy to hard, and possible dollar revenue contract. How specific to Site Recon? How can I see this on Site Recon using nodes or how visually all of this is in a map? Will this be covered on this class? So you want to rank this by, okay, or visually? Oh, I see. Well, tags is a great way to do it. So we have a feature that lets you add attributes on top of properties. And uh, one tag you would want to add right off the bat is, okay, these are the leads I'm going after, right? These, This is, and because in Site Recon, you would have properties that you have measured previously, they have become your customers and now you are servicing them. And then there would be active leads, there would be lost deals and so on, or just like in, in sales process. So you want to have that tag in there first that demarcates properties into like where they are in your funnel. Uh, once you have that, then add another tag. Let's say you filter all the properties that are pre-sales. And then you add this filter saying some range of contract value, zero to 50,000, 50 to 250 to 500 to a million. And you have broadly speaking, four tags so that it's easy to manage. And then you use those tags to further um, sort of, okay, here's a property that's pre-sales and in value, it's between $50,000 and $250,000. Um, now you will have just those properties um, open in front of you, and then you can get to work on it. Um, these filters work best uh, on the web app and uh, you can use uh, this. We did develop universal search on the mobile app as well. So this should be working there, but I haven't tried it myself. So definitely worth checking it out. And uh, you had an idea on how you could do that using notes or seeing all of that visually on a map. So that's a different kind of map where you want to probably have all of your prospect properties open on the screen in one go. You want to see like hundred properties on a single map, right? That seems to be the question you're asking. Now it's possible to create that, um, but it would be some work. So what we would advise you to do is you mark off your service area right you create you you create a property in site recon and you say you name it after a branch and then you mark off the service area of the branch on the map and then you place the order so that it gets created as a property don't order any measuring features there just like create this as a property and then you add point features on top of it and you have point features for each type of uh, revenue category right 0 to 50 50 to 50 250 and so on. And then these point features will help you color code it. Um, and then on top of it, you can use use nodes to sort of say, okay, which management company and whatnot. So it, you can we can think of a few different ways to structure this so that this information map is like easy to interpret um, and make sense. But um, really great question. Um, this is as much as I can answer it now. Uh, we'll probably like to sit across you and sort of really work this down with you, how it's best visualized. Um, but yeah, there are a few different ways to do that on Site Recon. I love that that answer. I think that's good. Uh, use the tags, right, to help uh, sort 
um, properties based on whatever you choose. Um, and then uh, color coding to help you, you, you know, kind of visualize it on a map. I think those two strategies uh, are great. It's a good, good, productive question. Appreciate it. Thanks for the question. All right. Oh, this is my favorite. So, so we're going to get, you're going to get objections from, uh, from customers from time to time. Not, not Frank, not Tyson, not Brian, because they're on top of it, right? They're, they're, uh, they're out there. But some of you guys, maybe you're going to get told every now and then your price is too high or we're not familiar with you or we don't know if you do multifamily, you just do office industrial, you're going to get some objections. So if you know that, and you know that as we all sit here right now, you know, that your clients or, or your prospects may give you some objections, then let's plan for it now, right? And you kind of know what they are. You kind of know, you know, the number one is, I don't know about your price. I don't know about your price. So what are you going to say? Well, there's a number of things you can say, you know, well, what's your budget, right? Um, we want your business. You know, you wouldn't be talking to us if you weren't interested in us. So I wonder maybe if we can redevelop the scope to get within your budget, but tell me where we need to be. They may come back with you. Uh, we're not familiar with you. We, we don't we don't know you. Well, awesome. Great. It's a good chance for us to get to know each other. I'll take you out to lunch and let's go look at two or three of my properties that I do in the area or that are similar to the to, to your property. Or did you get an opportunity to uh, call some of the folks on our reference list? Let me tell you about some of those folks. Or uh, maybe you're bid multifamily and traditionally you do office industrial. Uh, you're right. We don't do any multifamily. And that's why we want to do yours because we want to do an excellent job because we want you to brag on us so that we can you can be our entree into this market. But how can you turn those objections into a positive or at least a conversation point so that it doesn't stop the process? You can kind of sit down now and think of the six or eight or 10 most common objections that a, that a prospect might have and think about, well, what are the things that I could say that uh, that could turn that into a positive or at least move the conversation forward and role play. That means literally finding somebody in your office that you can say, all right, Utkarsh, uh, you know, come up with two or three objections and I want to talk through overcoming these with you in a, in a setting that's comfortable so I can get used to those words kind of coming out of my mouth. I, I in, in my career, I've role played presentation meetings a lot of times. Who's going to say what? What are we going to say? What about when they object to this, object to that? What are we going to say? What do we bring up? What do we show? That kind of preparedness, it doesn't, for me, it's amazing what that does for my confidence. You know, and I'm not, not really worried about, because bring it, you know, talk to me about the price. You don't like my price. All right. Because now we're going to talk about what's your budget? You know, where do we need to be? What is the value that I'm offering for this? We wouldn't be sitting in this room if you were happy with your current provider. Maybe you're not paying enough. I mean, wh whatever it is, but let's go ahead and, and prepare for that right now. Guys, this is a great time to just like shoot your objections over. Um, we are sort of nearing towards the end of the presentation, a few more slides. But if you got objections that you found like really thorny that people have thrown at you, uh, throw them here and let's, we got a lot of people here, smart people here, and we'll, we'll find an answer to it. One thought I had on the budget side was, uh, I mean, it just helps to have the uh, measurements of the property with you. Like it's an early visit that you've done with the property manager. If they're not like sort of opening up on the budget, then you can give them ranges and just like ask them to go yes and no on the range. Like, is it like between 50 and 60, 40 and 50, like where, where they at and like knowing um, where the property assets are at, then you can be very smart about the way you craft that that range to sort of figure out whether you what kind of margins you might end up making once you actually win the deal. I love that. I think it's a great suggestion. Offer budget ranges, right? So that you get some reaction to that. I also, I have used like the site recon, uh, you know, screenshots in my proposals because they're very professional looking, right? And you look like, you know, I didn't just make this up. <laughs> this is based on, you know, down to the centimeter kind of uh, what this is going to take, right? So. Um, validation. Yeah, Good. yeah, validation. That's exactly right. Yeah. Do you guys get like big and small kind of objections? Like, oh, you know, you are a, what, $8 million company, $5 million company, $6 million company. How can you take like an $800,000 job or a million dollar job? I mean, it's a, it's a very legitimate question. How does someone handle something like that? Who, uh, who on the line has had that uh, that kind of objection? You're a five million dollar company. You get a million dollar opportunity. You're going to have to go buy three trucks just to uh, to service that account. Um, how do you how do you handle that? 
hopefully this year somebody will have that problem and they can tell us how they uh, they handle it. Actually, I, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that particular one, Utkarsh. I have a uh, a client in Louisiana that has that problem right now. They're starting an eight hundred thousand dollar account this month, and so they're literally going to have to you know hire an account manager and buy three trucks to and staff them to uh, to go take it on. What their approach was just to be very transparent, you know. I am going to have to buy three more trucks and field three more crews and an additional uh, account manager to service this account. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to put all my newbies on your account. I'm going to put, you know, a couple of experienced crews on your accounts and put my new crews on accounts that we have history with. We know how to do them. And we know how to do them well. I'm going to put my experienced account manager on your account. And my new hire, I'm going to put on accounts that we've had for a period of time that we have a relationship with, that we have less risk with, so that you'll get the benefit of my, my experience manager. That's one of the ways that that I've seen it. I, I love the transparency, you know, not, might as well just tell them, hey, it's a big account for us. Um, but I also love the strategy of, yeah, we're well, going to have to staff up, but I'm not putting every new person with you. I'm putting some experienced people with you. At least half of the team will be experienced that um, that takes over this account. How do you, um, like, what's going through the mind of a property manager at that point? Like, listening to all that, what what are they thinking? Like, okay, if, if I give this job to this small company, then they are going to work out their skin to make sure this looks great. Like, is that the reasonable? That's exactly the, yeah, that's exactly the seed that you need to plant is that I may have somewhat less risk with a large company because they've got greater resources. However, it's not as important to them. My $800,000 account to a small company is the most important piece of business that they have right now. So, you know, I don't have, and they will be all over this trying to make sure that, uh, that it goes well. So there's a couple of other slides that uh, that we have as we're, we're kind of closing out here. So uh, for Michael Mayberry, the ability to compress the amount of time in the beginning of the bid process is huge to us because it allows us to do a better job, a better production re review, and it allows us to spend more time focusing on the client. So it, it you can't just be busy. You got to be focused on closing business, right? And if I can take some of the uh, uh, the measurement, the uh, make the estimating side easily easy, take some of the clerical, for lack of a better word, an administrative type task off of the team. Why wouldn't I do that, right? Particularly when it really didn't cost a whole lot of money to do that, because I need to be focusing on the client and producing great quality work, right? So anything that I can do to not be busy with non-value added things, I'm going to take advantage of 100%. I also want to, for goodness sakes, in today's world, communicate visually, show your client images. Don't You may be the best writer on this call in the last landscape industry. And I got news for you. Nobody's going to read it. <laughs> People don't read all of these days. The fewer words, the more visuals in an Instagram, TikTok, Facebook world, the better, right? Make it easy for people to see and understand your point based on images. You'll communicate better. It's more interesting. You look prepared. Dense blocks of text are not going to get read. So they may need to be part of your legalese and all that. I get that. But communicate visually. It's huge. Also, think about speed. The first person there has a pretty good chance of closing. It allows us to be the first person there with a proposal much more often from Tim Johnson. Look, it, we I live in the Southeast United States. We had a huge rainstorm uh, here this week and I've got water in my basement. My wife's all upset and pissed about it. I called three different companies. You know who I'm gonna hire? I'm gonna hire the first one that gets here, I, right? Because I gotta solve the problem. I'm not as price sensitive as I am speed sensitive. When property managers need to get a response from you, if they've got a project and they've got to wait, in today's world, too often they're going to move on. They're going to move to whoever is responding to them, who's quick, who can get the information to them quickly, right? So speed kills. If it's too fast and it's not well thought out, that's not the right direction. But if it's too slow, you're going to miss the opportunity. So be quick. Don't be, you don't have to get it done tomorrow. But you need to return things these days, 42 hours, 72 hours, maybe a week. If it gets much more than that, frankly, people are, are 
they're tired of having that file open on their desk or in their mind or in their outlook or however they stay themselves, keep themselves organized. They want to close it. I, I got other things I need to move on. So don't, don't kid yourself. The speed doesn't matter. It does matter. A few summary points, just as we're running out of time, think short-term goals, use a system. We've provided at least verbally today, a system for you. Prioritize, 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 use geography, the value versus a difficulty matrix. Route density makes a huge difference. Gather information so that you look smart and you are smart and you are prepared when you go in there. Uh, talk about their properties and not just about yourself. Uh, master the, the cold call, the cold outreach. Uh, develop the, uh, the the courage that, that Tyson has and Jessica has. Respond to RFPs, but be cool, be collected. Um, it's not life or death. You're, you're going to get told no a certain amount of time, and that's just part of the process. Uh, cultivate your self-worth by staying busy and being successful and talking to people, talking to people. Um, stay grounded in a plan rather than being reactive to stuff that's just going on. Your plan is your list that you're reprioritizing and pursuing. Those are your targets. That's what you want to pursue. Learn how to deal with objections. It's part of the process. The best baseball players in the world strike out more than they, they hit, right? So, um, and, and, and yet uh, the best ones stay at it, right? Free your time by learning how to delegate or, or outsource the clerical kind of administrative task so that you can talk to people. That's, that's how you move the process forward. Weaponize visual communications. Look, the more visual that you can make it, the faster it is for people to comprehend, right? So you want, you want to make it easy for people to understand and leverage speed. Leverage speeds to outpace your competition. So really appreciate everybody being here today. Utkarsh and I will hang for a few minutes. If anybody's got any, any other questions, I know we're right up against the clock. If you need to drop, drop. But uh, if you have a question, we'll, we'll be happy to hang on here for a few more minutes. Utkarsh, uh, we do have a question from Danny. He's asking what sets iTreeCon apart from the software attentive property measurements. All right. Going to take that up in a minute. Um, guys, we're going to reach out to you with uh, information for future classes. Look out for the email that comes from one of us. Most probably it's going to come from Justin, um, justin at sitrecon.ai. And we'll keep you posted on when those classes are happening. We did share the schedule with you um, earlier in the slide deck here. And uh, feel free to take a snapshot of it. But the thing we are dealing with schedules of very busy people. And these schedules can uh, move around. Uh, so look out for that email. Um, we will go through these lessons and uh, thank you for being here. Our goal here is to make you a really successful 2024 and uh, glad we could off in style today here. Right. Right. Q&A. So the question that Danny has raised, I want to answer that uh, by, first of all, talking about visual communication. The thing, I think right off the bat, that thing that sets you apart is how well you can communicate your worth to the property manager and uh, the way we have set up our mobile app the the speed with it with which you can take notes the detail that you can capture on site using uh templates so you can set up an estimating template that lets you go through all the points uh that you need to sort of include in your proposal um and you will never miss out on that every time you visit a site and let's say you're collecting this data that ben is talking about uh you're doing your cold calls have a template for collecting information on a property, um, collect all those data points. Let's say the property manager asks you for a bid, you have another template for that. You collect all the data points there and you're good to go. And so the structure of the mobile app really allows you to collect detailed information on site. And this detail is going to set you apart from other guys who are just going to walk through the bid process, like just, just another bid that they are used to um, working with. You will look special because you went through that extra mile, but you basically just followed a checklist that this tool placed in front of you and made sure you were successful. Our customers have had like great success with it, using it on the sales end. And also like just the handover process. If you are collecting all that data in the field, then you are going to do a great handover to the accounts team. Then the accounts team can take that account and they can do a good job of it. They can very easily communicate internally why, you know, they can communicate internally. What are the things to do on site? Um, you know how people get tired of listening to, okay, here are bed weeds. Well, yeah, here are bed weeds, but how many times 
are you going to bring up the same point? So that helps you deal with the quality issues internally. Again, if you have templates set up for quality assessments, then those templates will help you really break through a lot of data very quickly. So you can go through hundreds of sites and you can find out the sites that are not doing well. If you are going with your account management team across all those sites, you're collecting information on which properties are doing well, which properties are not. All of those insights service in a report dashboard. And then from that dashboard, you can start making decisions very quickly. You can focus attention of crews on sites that are not doing well. And then you can proactively communicate to the clients on those sites, again, very quickly using the mobile app, just like shooting a report from your phone that look, we are ahead. Uh, we are on top of this problem and we're going to fix it for you in the next couple of weeks. Here's the plan. And so that's that's one piece where we really excel and set ourselves apart from attentive property Intel, any other tools out there. The way we have set you up to create maps of properties on site. Landscaping is like a very um, on site job. It's like you can do your takeoffs in the office to, to a good extent, but um, the data you collect in the field is like really important whether it's to win the sale or to retain the customer. And so to close off this point, um, right from pre-sales to sales, to actually doing a good job on site, finding service issues on site, running good communications with the client, the whole platform is sort of set up from takeoffs to um, client communications in a way that uh, it sits on top of any other production software that you have right now, very cleanly adds value where those production softwares don't, don't add value let's say you're using the regular softwares that are available in the market. So using this tool on top of it is very straightforward. And then that really helps you not only win the deal, but actually retain the deal. Because if you don't retain the customer, then you should not be in the maintenance business. You should, where you're selling maintenance contracts, right? Because the re, there's a recurrent revenue, they should go back to doing construction. So the platform is really set up to help you do that. On the visual side of things, there are other features you will find on our tool you don't find anywhere else, like Snapshot Studio um, really allows you to create large format prints. Um, if property managers are like very visual creatures, then you can show them like huge, huge sheets and um, they can basically walk around the property with you and you can be pointing at that thing in your hand. If you're using attentive, you might just go around and you might take snapshots of the map and you would like to piece them together and like to create that large format print. But on our tool, you don't have to do that. So the communication piece again stands out. And then if you're looking for speed, then some of the features we have like AI measurements, you can get back measurements, parking lot measurements very quickly. Like you can get those back in seconds. Literally in under a minute, you will get back turf and parking lots measured on all properties up to five acres. And so that's another differentiator. We are not building a whole business management software. We are just focused on the takeoff to the site assessment side of things. We are focused on mapping. And if it's 2024, you want vendors who are focused on a part of the stack who are not after, you know, owning every little piece of your business to increase their customer value. We want to we wanna just be the best at mapping as we've always been, because if you look at the features we have launched, we have pretty much been the first one to launch those features, whether it's coming out with the takeoff software, AI takeoffs in 2020, coming out with like rapid measurements on the turf and parking lot side in 2021, or the whole site assessment piece in 2022. Like, that means our users have always been on the cutting edge of the sales process in their markets. So if you're with Site Recon, you've got that. And let's face it, we are all here. We are dealing, it, talking about sales. We are in the sales masterclass. Um, no other tool has actually made the effort to put together a course like that for their users. And this whole course is going to go behind our subscription system very soon. And we're going to make sure that our customers go out there and just beat the crap out of all the users who are not on site recon so at the end of the day we'll have site recon users in the market and then there will be no other companies that's basically what we're getting to and we're just doing mapping um and given what landscaping is a very outdoor physical activity mapping is the the key to that business as telecommunications, oil and gas companies, a lot of other companies have found over the years, even the city GIS. A lot of these guys have found over the years that mapping is the key to running a very efficient operation and you get that here.
Hey, we've got a number of other questions we've seen pop up. We're going to run out of time ultimately, but um, we are happy to respond to the questions. If we're not able to get to um, uh, to your question today, um, in the follow up notes that uh, that gets sent out, um, we'll try to take on these questions, and everybody can share the uh, the answers that we provide. Sounds good. Um, ben, is there any specific question you want to take up here? I don't know. They, I, I've seen like ten questions pop up since we, <laughs> since we left off, and I don't know how to uh, how to prioritize those on the fly. Uh, um, do you still I have do want for jumping on? No. Appreciate uh, having you. Do you still have time? Yeah, I got a minute. Sure. Okay, so I'll just go from uh, top down. It's like we are talking about hiring someone just to be an information gatherer. Do you think that's worth it, or do you think that's better done by salesperson? My instinct would be that it's it's best done by the salesperson, but there is a little bit of an ROI that you might want to think through. So let's just say that your salesperson can produce a million dollars a year in sales. And I'm just making up that number. And an information gatherer or person is going to cost you $50,000 a year. And I'm making up that number. Well, if having that person on place would increase my sales volume to 1.2 million or 1.3 million, then yeah, I'd probably risk $50,000 on that for the extra 20 to 30% gain that I could get out of my uh, salesperson. If it's not really going to necessarily mean that I gather more, that I close more sales, then I'd probably leave it for the salesperson to do it. So I think that's the way that I would think about it is what do I get out of the spend? You know, if I got to, if I got to pay an additional salary, then I need, you know, some kind of return on that. What could that potentially be? Hey, Ben. Yeah. My, my take on that is in, in sales for, for many years, and the more intel that I have, the more value that I have, the more value I can bring not only the company, but also the customers out there. So to me, it's a great value to have it. Uh, Frank, I think that's a great piece of feedback is the intelligence doesn't do any good unless it's in the, the salesperson's head, you know? So now if I got another person involved, now I got a communication gap that I got to overcome. So. I wouldn't exclude the idea because, you know, that's creative. Who knows? Uh, uh, maybe there's some value to it. But yeah, Frank, the, the intelligence has to be your intelligence to be valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, we'll find you a way to import that GIS data into Cytricon. Um, Whatever you are uh, taking as a information dump from uh, the GIS, um, share that with us. Um, Ashish is your, uh, I think, account manager. Um, share that with him. Um, and then we'll find a, find a way to get that into Cyphercon. Thanks for the question, Eric. All right, really appreciate everyone being here. From Ben, it's been a it's been a great good time. Good pleasure. Good to uh, good to see everybody on here. Uh, thanks so much. Wish you all the success in 2024. Great, thanks guys. Good luck, guys. Bye.